It's affectionately known as a hummer because of the humming sound made by its wings. Hummingbirds are also one of the most entertaining birds and are a delight to watch, especially when splashing in the water at bath time. And they hold more world records than any other bird. Records such as the smallest bird in the world, the only bird that can fly backwards, the only bird that flies like an insect, and the fastest vertebrate alive relative to its body length. In this video, you'll learn about the nesting habits of the Anna's hummingbird including courtship, nesting, hatching and nurture. We'll begin by learning how to identify the male and female Anna's hummingbird. So, let's get started. The Anna's hummingbird weighs 0.1 to 0.2 ounces or 3 to 6 grams, which is the weight of 2 to 3 playing cards. That's an adult hummingbird, and not a baby hummingbird like the one you see here. The average length for an adult Anna's hummingbird, male or female, including the tail, is about 4 inches or 10 centimeters long. As you can see with this female Anna's hummingbird, that's not very long. Anna's hummingbird is a stocky hummingbird about the size of a golf ball, with a wingspan of around 4.7 inches 12 centimeters. It has a short bill, and like other broad-tailed hummingbirds, its broad tail extends beyond the wing tips. The Anna's hummingbird is mainly green-gray in color. Grayer underneath an iridescent emerald on its back. The male Anna's hummingbird is a showstopper with its distinctive reddish-pink head and throat. It is not to be confused though with the ruby-throated hummingbird which you see here. The main difference is that the ruby-throated hummingbird does not have red on its head. The sparkly colors on the hummingbird are not from color pigment because as you'll see, when the Anna's hummingbird turns its head one way the sparkly neck and crown feathers can look dark. Instead, the colors are from the iridescent nature of the microscopic structure of the feathers themselves. Light bounces off them like it does off a soap bubble. The throat feathers are called the hummingbird's gorget. The word gorget comes from the times when a knight in armor wore a metallic collar, a gorget, to protect his throat. While the female Anna's hummingbird does not have the full coloring of the male, it does, unlike most other female hummingbirds, still have some iridescent feathers on its throat. Anna's hummingbirds don't have a typical north-south migration between summer and winter due to their amazing design and winter survival skills. They can be found on the Pacific coast from northern Mexico, right up to the Alaskan coast. Their breeding grounds range from Vancouver in British Columbia where the Anna's hummingbird was voted the official city bird, to California, their main breeding ground and the most common hummingbird in California, and then in southern Arizona. The Anna's hummingbird breeds from December to May-June. During this time she may have two clutches or broods. Males arrive early in breeding grounds and establish territory with good food sources. Females arrive a few weeks later and establish separate territories for nesting. The female hummingbird will locate a spot about 10 to 40 feet from the ground, but it can be as high as 90 feet. There, the female will build her 1 inch high by 1.5 inch wide nest which as it turns out, is a bit like a stretch and grow. The hummingbird nest is made from many different materials and is specially designed to stretch as the hummingbird chicks grow. Here's how it's done. The foundation is laid with pieces of spider silk which form a sticky base on which to build her nest. Spider silk is also good for holding the nest together. The female Anna's hummingbird can make over 150 trips a day collecting small pieces of moss, bark, straw, twigs or leaves, as well as feathers, fuzz, fur or hairs from leaves. And because every good home needs insulation, the female hummingbird uses plant down from the likes of thistles, cattails or dandelions, as well as cotton. These form a good, soft, stretchable padding. The hummingbird is a master builder and quilter. Moss and lichen are great for camouflage on the outside and everything is held together by more sticky spider silk. And of course, you need to stomp on the materials to squash them into place for the perfect nursery. It may take a couple of weeks and hundreds of trips but eventually she'll have a place to call home for two little Anna's hummingbird chicks. And when you work hard like this, you have to remember to keep your energy levels up. 
This may involve a few extra trips to the corner store for nectar when the need arises, which for the hummingbird, is often. When the nest is built, the female goes looking for a male to breed with. Males court females with a scratchy, buzzy, chirpy song that lasts longer than most hummingbirds. In fact, the Anna's hummingbird is one of the most vocal. Here we have a male and female Anna's hummingbird at the same feeder. Could this be love? In the courtship process, which could end with a fail if the female just flies off, the female may lead the male back to her nest. There, she can sit back and relax while the male shows off. To get the female's attention, the male Anna's hummingbird will skydive, without a parachute, from around 130 feet. Before the male dives, he will hover around where the female is and then climb to where he is going to dive from. When diving, the male will reach speeds of up to 60 miles per hour which is equal to 385 body lengths per second. When comparing body lengths per second, this is faster than any other vertebrate. It's faster than a cheetah, the fastest land mammal, which runs 60 body lengths per second. And it's faster than the peregrine falcon, the fastest of all vertebrates, which flies at 200 body lengths per second. At a critical point in its dive, time to perfection when the male Anna's hummingbird is in front of the female, he will create a sharp chirp sound with a 60 millisecond spread of its tail feathers towards the bottom of the dive. The effect is similar to how the reed in a clarinet vibrates. And the g-forces at the end of the dive, are more than enough to cause a jet pilot to black out. When the sun is shining, the dives are positioned to give maximum reflection from the iridescent throat and crown. Eggs are laid 24 to 30 hours after breeding. Incubation takes 12 to 20 days. As the instructions in the hummingbird's DNA build new lives, the female hummingbird must regularly leave her eggs exposed due to her constant need to feed. And while waiting for her eggs to hatch, the mother hummingbird is constantly on the alert. Here you'll see she's keeping her watchful eye on what might be a male hummingbird who's arrived too late. So he is quickly chased off. The day before the hummingbird chicks are born, the mother hummingbird sings a special pre-hatching song, chirping in her nest in a way unlike any other time. This has only been observed the day before the hummingbird chicks hatch. Hummingbirds typically lay two white eggs the size of jelly beans, about one to three days apart. But the eggs will usually hatch the same day as the mother hummingbird delays the incubation process for the first egg, until the second egg is laid. After about two weeks incubation the hummingbird chick will hatch. Its bill, which has hardened during incubation and which also has a unique hook on the end, plus its strong neck muscles, help it to break open the egg shell. When baby hummingbird chicks hatch, they are about an inch long. They are born blind and naked with no feathers. They don't open their eyes until seven to nine days and they have no sense of smell. But although blind, they still lift up their heads to be fed as they can feel the wind of their mother's wings as she approaches the nest. Here we see a newly hatched hummingbird chick receiving its very first meal. It will be one of many being fed up to three times every hour from dawn to dusk. At some stage, the mother hummingbird will have disposed of the shell fragments to hide the evidence from lurking predators. You'll hear more about these predators later. As well as nectar, the hummingbird feeds her chicks insects and bugs such as, small spiders, fruit flies, beetles, ants, aphids, gnats, mosquitoes, insect eggs and larvae, plus insects invisible to the human eye. The Anna's hummingbird eats more insects than all other North American hummingbirds. No doubt this helps their winter survival. It has a flexible lower bill that bends down as much as 25 degrees, then, in less than one hundredth of a second, snaps over its flying prey. The food is regurgitated by pumping her neck muscles and fed into the baby hummingbird's waiting mouths. Hummingbird chicks just about double in size in the first two days. 
Their bills start to darken and tiny fuzzy pin feathers begin to cover their body. The mother Anna's hummingbird will care for the chicks on her own until they are ready to leave the nest. The male is not involved in this process. During this time, there's regular visits to the corner store for nectar, insects and bugs, for herself as well as her chicks. The mother hummingbird is so skilled at feeding her chicks that she can even do it on the fly, literally. Hovering and feeding the chicks at the same time. About three weeks after the Anna's hummingbird chicks have hatched, they will be fully feathered and getting ready to fly. To encourage them to leave the nest, the mother hummingbird does not feed them as much. And then when the chicks do start to fly above the nest, she hovers higher up tempting them with the food they crave. Sadly, not all hummingbird chicks make it to fledgling stage where they can survive without their mother and have a greater survival rate. While the Anna's hummingbird can live to 8 years in the wild, the average lifespan is about 4 years. This is due to a high mortality rate estimated at 60% or higher. Here are some of the reasons. 1. Nasty neighbors. The nest building materials can be raided by other birds such as finches to build their own nests. 2. Bad weather. It only takes a strong gust of wind or a sudden downpour to destroy the tiny hummingbird nest or dislodge either the hummingbird eggs or chicks. 3. Poor nutrition. This can lead to starvation, sickness and disease which are all related and can often be traced back to poor or limited food source. 4. Flying accidents. Most of these involve collision. In urban areas, these collisions often involve windows. While hummingbirds have a unique collision avoidance system, it doesn't work so well with glass. 5. Predators. These include, squirrels, chipmunks, domestic cats, insects such as the praying mantis, snakes, lizards, even frogs mistaking a hummingbird for an insect, hawks, and spiders. Hummingbirds looking for silk to build a nest can end up trapped in a spider's web and become easy prey for the spider. While the Anna's hummingbird protects her nest by using camouflage materials, building it high up on thin branches that are harder to climb, and can scare some intruders off with the sound of her wings and aggressive dive bombing, she will not always succeed. Anna's hummingbird is named after a 19th century Duchess Anna Mar Senna, also known as Princess de Essling. She was known for her beauty and was Grand Matress, Mistress of the Robes, the highest position in the service of the last Empress of France, Eugenie, who was wife of Napoleon III. Anna's husband was an ornithologist who had collected 12,500 bird specimens including one unidentified hummingbird. This same hummingbird was later named by the French naturalist, René Lesson, as Anna's hummingbird. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing, liking and leaving a comment. To discover more, click the video or videos displayed here on this end screen or browse our channel. Thanks for your support.